quad for the involvement fair. President Obama will speak on ISIS this evening. And a staple of Marshall Street is officially closed. Citrus TV News starts right now. Good afternoon and welcome to Citrus TV News Live at 6. I'm Allie Bauman. And I'm Max Darrow. Tickets to see Oprah when she visits Syracuse University went on sale today. And that's our top story tonight. Oprah Winfrey is coming to Syracuse University in about three weeks, but she's already making waves on campus. Oprah is dedicating the brand new studio in the Newhouse School on September 29th. Tickets for the event went on sale today at 11 a.m. and employees said it took only eight minutes to completely sell out. The line stretched all the way outside the Shine Student Center with some students getting to the box office as early as 7 a.m. for a chance to see the TV personality speak. Of course I'm excited to see Oprah. I've been here since 6.58 this morning, so I wanted to be the first one here. There was some concern students would be upset after the tickets sold out quickly. Employees at the Shine Box office told Citrus TV News that they had called DPS because they feared unrest with so many students not getting a ticket for the event. And now it's time for us to get our first look at today's weather. Let's hand it over to Citrus TV's Brooke Glatz. As you can see, it was a nice cloudy day on campus, but luckily the sun did come out for the involvement fair that was on the quad, which we can see here now they've nicely cleaned up. The high today was 80 degrees with a low at 69 degrees, so it was a little warm, but with the winds blowing so hard, pretty chilly actually. To find out more about what's coming up this weekend, please tune in to Citrus TV News. Senior women's soccer player Hannah Strong has apologized. Strong, who's under investigation regarding her role in an online video of her using homophobic and racial slurs, released her apology in an email late last night. The email begins, quote, I do not know how to express how, sor how truly sorry I am for my actions displayed in the recent online video. The words I chose are equally cruel and hurtful and do not reflect in any way how I view those it may have offended, end quote. Strong goes on to say that she is taking responsibility for her actions and she apologized to everybody impacted by her words. The investigation is still ongoing, but communication law expert Roy Gutterman, a professor at SU, told Syracuse.com Strong's actions weren't illegal and she didn't even clearly break SU's own code of conduct. The Office of Student Activities at Syracuse University hosted their annual Student Involvement Fair on the quad today. More than 300 clubs and organizations ranging from cultural and religious organizations to campus publications to Greek life and more line the quad from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. The purpose of the event is to give student clubs and organizations the opportunity to advertise their mission and get more students involved in extracurriculars across campus. Hopefully you got the chance to stop by our Citrus TV booth. Some would call Cosmo's Pizza a Syracuse staple. The restaurant on Marshall Street shut down unexpectedly, unexpectedly this summer, and Citrus TV's Topher Lane took a look at what really happened and what is coming up next. He's with us, with us in studio right now. Thanks, Allie. Cosmos is officially no more, and it was a staple indeed. Cosmos was serving SU students and alumni alike for 51 years, and a lot of people were pretty upset about it leaving. Cosmos Pizza. Formerly a Syracuse University student Marshall Street favorite, Cosmos has been on Marshall Street for 51 years serving milkshakes, pizza, burgers, and breakfast to students and alumni for decades. It's basically like a tradition to a lot of people. I mean, I, I waited on tons of alumni who would come back and be like, oh my gosh, like I remember like coming here after class and it was like the big hangout spot. So I think just a lot of things changed over the years. In May, Cosmos closed for renovations, saying they will reopen in July until they ultimately close their doors by selling the establishment in the beginning of August. This left workers like Sarah out of a job, and she says there wasn't much warning. I came back to campus. 
campus and noticed that they were closed and I didn't really receive any kind of notification or anything regarding why they closed and um, you know they didn't let me know like hey you should probably try to find another job so that was kind of scary. The space that used to be the home of Cosmos will soon house sweet basil Thai and Vietnamese cuisine. Moving from Mattydale, the restaurant is excited to have the wide demographic of customers Marshall Street offers. Topher Lane, Citrus TV News. So Topher, sweet basil, Thai, and Vietnamese cuisine, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So what can students expect from this restaurant? Is it going to be like appetizing? Is it going to be another quick joint like Cosmos? What should students expect? Uh, it's, a, it's a very nice sit-down restaurant coming from Mattydale and they, they like Mattydale are coming over from Syracuse or to Syracuse to get the demographic of SU students and alumni and stuff but uh, they liked Mattydale. They want the, demogra the demographic here because uh, Destiny USA was ruining a lot of their service. The restaurant's opening there like Cheesecake Factory, uh, Cantina Laredo, those places made it a lot harder to have business out in Mattydale. But so they're going to have a nice sit-down restaurant, something that Marshall Street isn't necessarily accustomed to, but they hope maybe it'll bring a new flavor to Marshall Street. You know, when I talk to alumni about Syracuse, some staple places they bring up are Fagan's and Cosmos. So do you think alumni are going to be upset that, you know, this long memory is going to be gone? I think de I mean, it was definitely a throwback place. It had its jukeboxes you could put in a quarter, play, build me up buttercup, whatever you wanted to hear. So I think a lot of alumni will definitely be disappointed that it's gone, but you know, it's not, some things have to come to an end, pages have to turn, so it was a great chapter in Marshall Street history and Syracuse history, but it's got to move on eventually. Thank you, Topher. And a crime alert for students tonight. The Department of Public Safety is investigating an armed robbery that took place late last night at the 100 block of Comstock Avenue near East Genesee Street. A student says she was sitting in her parked car when a man walked up to her passenger side window and pulled out a gun. The man demanded the student's belongings and got away with her cell phone. The student got away unharmed. The suspect is being described as a tall, thin male wearing a red hooded sweatshirt and dark jeans. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Syracuse Police Department. Two former Syracuse University ball boys are asking the New York Court of Appeals to reinstate their slander lawsuit against head SU men's basketball coach Jim Beheim. Bobby Davis and Mike Lang accused longtime Syracuse assistant coach Bernie Fine of molesting them as children. That case was thrown out and no charges were ever made against Fine. But in 2011, Davis and Lang claimed Beheim slandered them by calling them liars who were out to get money after the allegations came to light. Beheim later publicly apologized for his comments. New York State's highest court heard oral arguments in the case yesterday. And coming up on Citrus TV News, the White House talks strategy in defeating ISIS and a new pulse as Americans feel even less safe than they did before 9-11. We'll be right back after the break. Learning how to kick flip six stairs takes determination. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Officials say a South Carolina man will be charged with the murder of his five children. 
This happening after he led authorities to a secluded area in Alabama where he left each of his five children's bodies wrapped in individual garbage bags. Timothy Ray Jones Jr. is being charged with child neglect and is waiting extradition from South Carolina to Mississippi. Jones has been in jail in Mississippi since Saturday after he was arrested for suspicion of driving under the influence. A new poll has been released revealing that 47 percent of Americans believe the country is less safe now than it was before the September 11th attacks. The NBC News Wall Street Journal poll is in stark contrast to just a year ago when only 28 percent of Americans felt the same way. This is, a day, uh, this is the day of Obama's speech to outline his plan to combat ISIS, the terrorist group who has beheaded two American journalists, James Foley and Stephen Sotloff. With the anniversary of 9-11 tomorrow, many Americans fear another, fear another attack. Tomorrow will be the 13-year anniversary of the September 11th attacks on the United States and its first anniversary since the 9-11 Museum opened in May. The museum sits beneath the 9-11 Memorial, where the commemoration ceremony uh, this year will take place. Though for the first time ever this year, the ceremony will be planned by the September 11th Foundation and not New York City or the mayor's office. The transition began in 2012, but the city remains closely involved with the foundation to ensure that the ceremony runs smoothly. The ceremony will begin tomorrow morning. President Obama plans to lay out his strategy on defeating ISIS in a speech tonight and to America tonight. A senior White House official says the president has thought about the possible use of airstrikes in Syria and that the president will outline his plans both in the air and on the ground in his address this evening. Meanwhile, Secretary of State John Kerry is heading to Saudi Arabia this week to encourage the Saudi government to help fight ISIS. Both he and President Obama have stressed the United States will not be alone in the upcoming military action. The president will lay out tonight uh, a more detailed uh, description of exactly what the United States is prepared to do together with many other countries in a broad coalition in order to take on uh, this terrorist uh, structure which uh, uh, is unacceptable by any standard anywhere in the world. And while Obama tries to convince countries around the world to help destroy ISIS, he has one unexpected and unwanted fan in the Middle East. Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri is said to be hiding out somewhere in Pakistan or Afghanistan, where he and the rest of al-Qaeda are hoping that President Obama will unveil a plan to end ISIS. Al-Qaeda has been in a battle with ISIS over which group is leading the global jihadist movement. All indications so far suggest that the president will use strategies to deal with ISIS, similar to how the U.S. has dealt with al-Qaeda in the past. And while the Scottish flag is still being flown at the U.K. Prime Minister's office in London, it's uncertain that it will be in that way in a few weeks. British Prime Minister David Cameron and other British political leaders arrived in Scotland on Wednesday to try and convince the Scots to maintain their status as a member of the United Kingdom. Cameron's personal plea is an effort to keep the 307-year-old union between England and Scotland intact. If the Scots were to secede, it's likely that Cameron would face calls from his Conservative Party to step down. A look with Brooke at what's in store for the weather. Brooke? Thanks, Allie. So today we see that there is a high of 80 degrees and a low of 69. It was partly cloudy, pretty much overcast for most of the morning and the late evening afternoon time, but we did see a little sun earlier in the day, which was good. The winds have calmed down a little bit. They're only at about 11 miles per hour right now, as opposed to the 21 that we were seeing earlier. Unfortunately, that is not going to stop because there is going to be late thunderstorms tonight. Early in the evening, it will be again slower winds, but pick right back up to in the 20s. So be aware of that with the low at 69. You will also definitely need an umbrella when you're going to class tomorrow because there will be morning showers until about 1 p.m. scattered though, so nothing too bad. High of 74 tomorrow, so again, getting a little chilly. You might also want the rain jacket. We can see the current temperatures around the area are 73 in Syracuse, 75 in Buffalo, pretty much 70s across the board, 80s if you get down to Columbus, but it's getting cooler. We're starting to feel the few effects of fall so far. 
Moving on to the current dew points, we see that it's, again, nice and comfortable now, but with those storms coming on the way, it's definitely going to get more humid, so be a little aware of that. The precipitation forecast for the next 48 hours is not too bad, but like I said, there will be rain, so make sure you dress for the weather. Our five-day forecast shows that this weekend there will be rain, unfortunately, tomorrow and Saturday, but Friday and Sunday will be nice and sunny. Temperatures are, again, dropping significantly from 80 today all the way down to 63 on Saturday. So definitely start breaking out that winter weather if you have it in storage. And that's all we have for right now. Thanks, Brooke. Coming up after the break, what marijuana has to do with getting a high school diploma and how you can get the iPhone 6 for free. Now the big guy comes up with that. Enfría alimentos crudos y preparados lo antes posible. Este año, una de seis personas en Estados Unidos se enfermará por comer alimentos contaminados. Visita foodsafety.gov barra diagonal español. Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Red State, Blue State, Vegan, Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Night Owl. Early bird. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Today we are launching the biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. Those are the words of Apple CEO Tim Cook at an event in Cupertino, California. Apple unveiled a multitude of new products, two new iPhones, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, a new smartwatch, and a mobile payment platform called Apple Pay. The new iPhones have bigger displays, allowing for bigger batteries, which are said to last for up to 11 hours of video watching on the iPhone 6 and 14 hours of video watching on the iPhone 6 Plus. Pre-orders for the iPhone 6 will begin Friday with prices starting at $199. But there's already a way to get the iPhone for free. Verizon Wireless announced that anyone who chooses to turn in an old iPhone and renew a two-year contract will get the 16-gigabyte version of the new iPhone for free. Well, the next time you see a hashtag on Twitter that is open for interpretation, check to see what it means before you tweet. DiGiorno Pizza learned this the hard way. The hashtag, why I stayed, started to trend on Twitter to promote domestic violence awareness. Unknowingly, the DiGiorno Twitter account tweeted, you had pizza with the hashtag. Within minutes, the tweet was deleted and DiGiorno apologized a number of times after swift backlash from Twitter users around the world. The brand has since apologized, saying, quote, a million apologies, did not read what the hashtag was about before posting, end quote. Teens who smoke marijuana daily are more than 60% less likely to receive their high school diploma than those who don't. This is coming from a study from the Lancet Psychiatry of more than 4,000 subjects, which was released on Tuesday. The study found that daily adolescent users were 18 times more likely to become dependent on the drug, 7 times more likely to attempt suicide, and 8 times more likely to use illegal drugs in the future. The authors of the study say that teens who delay or don't smoke marijuana are more likely to have broad social and health benefits. Yet another American who contracted Ebola is on American soil tonight. The patient who has not yet been identified is in the hands of doctors and staff at Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. The patient could be seen yesterday walking with assistance into the hospital after being transported from Sierra Leone. So far, the World Health Organization says nearly 2,300 people have died from Ebola in Africa.
The new Apple iPhones and watches were not the only things released at the Cupertino press conference. Apple CEO Tim Cook brought rock band U2 out to perform at the end of the conference where they played a brand new single. Then they announced that their new album Song of Innocence was immediately available on iTunes for free. The album release is the biggest of all time, going out to over half a billion iTunes users. Those who sign up for the iTunes within the next month will also get the brand new album from U2 for free as well. Earlier this year, actor Shia LaBeouf was charged with disorderly conduct stemming from a confrontation at a Broadway show. Today he pleaded guilty to those charges at a courthouse in New York City. LaBeouf has been getting treatment for an alcohol problem since his arrest in June and will be allowed to withdraw the guilty plea and have the case dismissed if he stays in treatment for three more months and out of trouble for six. This is not the first alcohol-related incident the actor has been involved in. In 2008, he was arrested in Los Angeles on a drunken driving charge after he crashed his pickup truck. The sports world is full of drama with punches, suspended players, and a chance for revenge on the soccer field. Don't go anywhere. Sports is coming up next. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's going to get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 88 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 1,000% increase in the last 40 years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. The silence is broken. Today, head coach Phil Wedding spoke out for the first time on the issue of Hannah Strong. The senior midfielder of the SU women's soccer team was seen using offensive and hurtful language in a video that was posted to Instagram. Um, well, we, we have a code of conduct ourselves. You know, the, the team has a code of conduct ourselves. Um, uh, we, we have policies and procedures by which the team operates, not let alone the university. Uh, I'm glad that uh, she's come out and said something. I think that was important. Um, you know, that there, are, there are codes of conduct for everyone. And we, we try, we uphold the university's code of conduct, and, but we also have the way that we operate as a team. Um, so uh, hopefully um, she can progress and, and move past this unfortunate incident. Strong issued an apology today via email, formally expressing her regret and apologies concerning the video. A forum is planned for this Friday, September 12th, in Grant Auditorium to address issues of diversity and tolerance on campus. Strong is still suspended indefinitely. After a disappointing performance in the NCAA tournament last year, not all hope is lost for SU basketball fans. ESPN released national projected rankings for the upcoming season, where the Orange secured a strong eighth spot on the list. The panel considered coaching, current talent, recruiting, program power, and stability. SU had no problem in the coaching category, with Jim Beheim returning for his 39th season. Returning players like Rakeem Christmas, Trevor Cooney, and Michael Benajay are expected to have a promising impact in the upcoming season. 
More than footballs were flying in last Friday's game against Villanova. In case you didn't hear, Terrell Hunt punched a Wildcat player during the game, earning him an ejection in the second quarter. Hunt addressed the punch for the first time in a press conference on Tuesday. It's not going to happen again, plain and simple. What you learned about yourself these last couple weeks? Nothing I only learned about myself. You know, uh, I'm the same person. You know, I made a mistake. It's simple. You make mistakes, you learn from them, and you move forward. That's all. Did you think when the play happened it was a, a dirty hit? Yeah, I did, but uh, I still do. But, you know, I got to keep my cool. Jason Hunt threw for over 1,500 yards and ran for seven touchdowns. The redshirt senior returned for the upcoming game against undefeated Central Michigan on Saturday. Kickoff is at 12 noon and the game will be televised on ESPN News. As the weather gets cooler, baseball gets hotter. Postseason is approaching and every game matters for Derek Jeter and the Yankees. New York faced AL East rival Tampa Bay on Tuesday in the last game of the series at home. Hiroki Kuroda on the mound for the Yankees at the top of the second inning. That's James Loney hitting a solo home run to get things started. Score is 1-0 Rays. Let's jump to the top of the third. The Rays have runners at the corners. Loney again hits a single into center field that scores Ben Zobrist. Rays are up 3-0. Bottom of the fifth, the Yankees have the bases loaded. Chris Young hits a two-run single into center field, scoring Chase Headley and Ichiro Suzuki. The Yanks are down just a run, chasing the Rays 4-3. Bottom of the seventh, Suzuki stands on second base and Drew flies out to Will Myers who throws out Suzuki at second base for the inning ending double play. The Yankees ran out of gas on this one and the Rays would take it 4-3. to three. Although the Yankees couldn't pull through last night, the Mets rocked the house at Citi Field. The 2-0 win over the Colorado Rockies improved the Mets record to 70-75 and 75 overall. Matt Denbecker scored first off a single to left in the fifth. Granderson kept things going in the sixth with a double to right that drove in the second run for New York. The Mets try to go for the sweep tonight in the third game of the series against the Rockies. And the New York Red Bulls need some wings to fly past a tough DC United team tonight. DC shut out New York in the past two matches and the Red Bulls must put a stop to tag team forwards Fabian Espindola and Luis Silva if they hope to get the W. The game takes place at Red Bull Arena tonight at 8 p.m. Thanks, Lauren. Stay tuned. After the break, we'll have your wake-up weather with Brooke. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for Citrus TV News live at 6.